Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in my kitchen. Where are we going to go? I'm thinking Sicily. Does that sound good right now? It's kind of winter and it's kind of cold here, so I'm thinking like the warm island overlooking the beautiful Adriatic and Mediterranean. Okay, that sounds good. And what do you guys love? Do you guys love almonds and do you love sugar and you love crispy desserts? You're going to love this. I'll tell you what. Today what we're going to make is crocante di mandale, which basically means almond brittle. Crocante in Italian means crispy. So uh, like in English, we would say brittle, like an almond brittle or peanut brittle. So we're going to make something kind of like that. It's also known as a Sicilian torone, which is uh, not the nougat form of a torone, which is like a sweetened, a sweetened candy with nuts. So whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. It's going to be absolutely delicious. This is something that my grandmother, Nono Caroline, used to make very often. And you can make it with an assortment of nuts. And I'm going to discuss with you as we go along a couple other applications with this when it's done. Because it's great to eat just the way it is, but there's a, there's a couple other ways to eat it as well, which I want to share with you. All right, so let's go over ingredients. Let's start having some fun. So obviously our main ingredient center stage, you know, the name of the marquee is going to be almonds. So now, like I said, you can use almonds, you can use hazelnuts, walnuts, pecans. You can pretty much, pine nuts are great. You can use whatever assortment you want. Today I'm going to use almonds. We've got two cups of raw almonds. I didn't blanch them, the, the skins on them. This will be absolutely perfect. It'll be delicious. And I'm going to show you how to prep these to really bring out, you know, that like that really deepened Sicilian rustic flavor. Next, we're going to need sugar, right? We're going to add some dolce, some sweetness to it, right? So zucchero, we're going to add one and two third cups of castor sugar. So white granulated sugar. That'll be perfect. Now we're going to add a little bit more sweetness, and we want to add a little bit more of that authentic flavor of Italy, which is going to be honey. Remember, back in the old days, they didn't really have cane sugar, so honey was really the main means or main ingredient that they would use to sweeten a lot of their desserts. So here we've got two tablespoons of honey, mm, the organic stuff. Boy, I'll tell you, that is good stuff. We're going to use two tablespoons of water. If you can, try to use a spring water, like a bottled spring water. We're going to need some butter, so we're going to add some fat. We're going to add some creaminess. We're going to make like a caramel to this, which is great. So we're going to use two tablespoons, two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Next, we want to bring in sunshine. So sometimes when I think about foods, I think about like, you know, water, earth, grass, and sunshine. So I love lemons. Lemons are traditionally added to this. Um, you're going to see this a lot in southern Italy and, and certainly on the west coast, like the Amalfi Coast. So we're going to take the juice of the entire lemon and we're going to add the zest, the zest of the entire lemon. And that's going to give you the flavor of lemon, but then you have that intense flavor of the oils. And then as you're chewing it, that just gets released even more. Oh, it's so delicious. We're going to add one teaspoon, one teaspoon of a good high quality vanilla. Now we're going to need some salt. So just remember, if you have unsalted butter, you're going to add a little salt. The benefit of that is that you can control the amount of salt. If you have salted butter, don't panic. Don't add the salt, okay? So here I always use either a uh, pink Himalayan sexy salt or some Sicilian flat salt. So today we've got some salt from Sicily. It's flat, it's flaky, it's just delicious and briny and really gentle on the palate. I love it. Last, we're going to need some olive oil. Now, olive oil actually won't go in this, but I'll show you. There's a really kind of fun, quick application to make life a lot easier for you <laughs> when you're trying to eat this stuff. But if I'm going to use olive oil in any recipe that I would make, I would want something really high quality. I would want an Italian olive. Obviously, Italian olives are the best. I'm going to want something from Puglia. I'm going to want a grassy, earthy. I want peppery. I want some robust. Where would I go? Huh. Hey, anybody new to our channel, and certainly a big shout out and a big thank you to all our subscribers out there, guys. Hey, we own a, a farm in Italy. It's right in Puglia, Italy. It's, it's just above the heel, and we actually make uh, olive oil. We actually co-op with a whole group of farms in that area. We ship the olive oil here to bring you some of the best extra virgin, truly Italian olive oil you're ever going to have. My two sons, uh, Vito and Joe, I named the company after them. So if you hit the link above or below... Uh, or you go to my website, Cooking Italian with Joe, or my Facebook page, 
cooking Italian Joe. And guys, just click buy it now. Grab yourself a couple of bottles. We'll literally drop ship it right to your front door. A couple of clicks of your thumb. It'll end up uh, right at your front uh, doorsteps in your house. And I'll tell you, not only is it delicious, you know, think of it as, a, as taking a trip to Italy right in a bottle. Guys, a couple other things to make this come out really easy. You're going to need a cookie sheet or cookie pan. We're going to use that to roast the almonds in. Next, you're going to need some parchment paper. And that we're going to use to spread the almonds on when they're done with that caramel. And they're going to be really hot, so that'll make life really easy for everybody. You're going to need some kind of a microplaner or zester to get the get the zest off that lemon, a press of some sort for the lemon. You're gonna want a medium sized saucepan with a lid, ideally. And last prep, just get that oven preheated to about 400 degrees because we're gonna to wanna to roast the almonds for a few minutes before we add them into the caramel. Okay guys, what do you say we get going? So first thing we wanna do, oven's preheated, like I said, 400 degrees. We're gonna take our two cups of almonds, spread them right on our cookie sheet, and now, guys, we're going to throw these right in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. So what you're going to do is you're going to set them in for five minutes and then turn it, shake it a little bit, put them in for another five. You guys having fun yet? All right, so we've got our almonds in the oven. And like I said, we want to do about five to six minutes first. So I've got my almond prevent burn unit. Now I want to start prepping our caramel. Doesn't that sound delicious? Easy way to start the caramel, you're going to take your sugar and you're going to take your butter. I'm going to go ahead and add my water. And guys, get that heat about medium on temp. And here's the key, don't leave this. Next, guys, we're gonna add our lemon juice. Guys, get the juice of the whole lemon right in there off your press. And I'll give that a nice stir. Now I'm gonna take my honey, I'm gonna take my vanilla. Now, guys, I'm gonna take a pinch of my salt. And last, I'm gonna add my lemon zest. Oh, that smells so good. So that's our caramel ready to go here. And it's gonna start to brown. Guys, while I was prepping the caramel, I just pulled the almonds out. Look how beautiful that is. And I know you guys can't get that, but the aroma, those puppies are hot. The aroma right there releases all the oils. You get a deep and nutty flavor, a little bit more rustic. So we're gonna just set those aside. Not necessarily to cool, but we're gonna set those aside till the caramel's getting really close. Okay guys, the almonds are set aside, came out of the oven. My caramel is starting to cook down. Just a couple of tips that make this come out great. We're gonna get this right on the beginnings of starting to brown just on that tip of starting to caramelize. And then we're gonna add our almonds and I'll show you how to do that, but just watch it. All this is really hot. You don't want anything to splash back at you. That's really important. Next guys, you're gonna take that parchment and you're gonna take some Vito and Joe's olive oil and you're gonna put a thin little coating and you're gonna wipe it all the way across the top. That way when we pour our hot candy, on top of it and it cools over the counter, it won't stick to the parchment paper. Perfect. Okay, a couple other things to make this come out great. I'll tell you what, you hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner, the notification bell and a couple of thumbs up, boy, smash it for me, means the world to me. And I wanna give a big shout out to all my subscribers out there, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button. Hey, make you part of the family, you know what I mean? And then don't forget, you probably already did, you clicked it, I can literally, I can hear it being shipped to your house. Let's get finishing up our candy. Just starting to turn a little bit of that buttery gold. It's just starting to break right there. Now we're gonna add our almonds. I traditionally just add them right from the tray and they're hot and they're roasted and they're good. Now guys, give this a stir. And now we're gonna cook this down together, probably for about five or six minutes until this starts to get golden brown. So guys, just stir it every minute or two gently and just keep an eye on the color of your caramel. And when it's done, guys, we're gonna pour it right over our parchment. You see how gorgeous that is? So the sugar just started to fully caramelize. What you do is you turn the heat right off and just pull it off the heat and stir it for a minute so those bubbles kind of settle down. And there you go. So it's been about a minute and a half. You see how everything starts to cool down? See my caramel, how beautiful that is? Just gorgeous, filled with flavor, almonds are good. So I'm just gonna let that tighten up just for a minute or two, and then I'm gonna spread it out. Guys, it's been just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour everything right out here on the parchment. I try to get the nuts out first and then I pour the sugar out after if there's any remaining. And guys, what you wanna do is try to spread it out so you're about one layer of almond thick. And then if you see any extra liquid, just pull it in tight. It'll start to thicken and tighten up here pretty quick. Guys, we're done. The most difficult part is you're gonna wanna bite into that and taste it. I'm telling you, it's hot and dangerous. And guys, we're gonna let this cool down on the counter for a good 15 to 20 minutes, and everything's gonna get really hard and crunchy. Okay, guys, it's perfect, it's hard, it's crispy. So I'm gonna bring it right off to the side. Now I've got a platter that I'm gonna serve it on. And traditionally, guys, this is actually served in a, in a rustic format. So what you're gonna do is just kinda cover yourself up. 
So traditionally, guys, this is how it's going to be served. You're going to break it up and you're going to serve it out on a platter just like that. And I'll tell you, the aroma in here, you can just smell that deepened flavor of the of the almonds because you roasted them, you know, so the oils. And what you're also getting is hues of the, uh, of the vanilla and the sugar and the butter and... Oh, how gorgeous is that? And that's just beautiful. I wish I could give it to you right through your right through your camera here, guys. Cooking in town with Joe, smell a vision, taste a vision. That's gonna be my peach right there, and it's that it's that Siciliano uh, torone, you know, that that just deepened, rustic, delicious, you know, with the toasted almonds and the and the deepened flavor that comes out. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And before I bite into this, guys, I promised you there's a couple other applications you can use for this. So What's really fun is if you're making cookies, you take this and you grind it up in a food processor. You pulse it a few times and you can add that to your cookie dough. Another just absolutely phenomenal way to use this is if you're making like a gelato, like a vanilla gelato, it's the same idea. Throw it in your food processor a little bit so you still get some chunks and then you mix it in the gelato. Or better yet, you take some of those grindings and you top off uh, an ice cream. Like if you make an affogato with, uh, with uh, vanilla ice cream and you dump espresso over the top of it and then you sprinkle some of this over the top of that. Oh, oh man, are you kidding me or what? Woo! I think I'm gonna make that in a few minutes. All right, so what do you say, let's get going. Again, the aroma, the first thing that's hitting you is the almonds and because we roasted them and then they got really hot in the caramel, it just releases the oils and it's so delicious. And then you're getting the vanilla and the butter and, and then right near the end, right now I can get the lemon. You're gonna get the lemon when you taste it here. Watch your teeth. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. First thing that's hitting me again is the almond, that intense flavor. You get some that's a little bit brighter on the almond. It's not cooked so much, you get that other rustic deep in flavor from the roast and then obviously the sugar the sweetness the butter the vanilla and then right now i'm getting the lemon i get that lemon that delicious lemon what's great about the lemon is it brightens up the flavor so you get that sunshine as i call it in the chew and as you keep chewing it because we put the lemon zest in there you get that beautiful delicate flavor of lemon as you keep chewing it it just stays right there it literally gets better as you keep eating it you know the flavors just intensify in your mouth with the almond and the lemon and the butter. Right near the end, you can get the honey. Like you just get those notes of a different kind of sweetness. You know, that deepened flavor of the honey kind of intensifies the flavor of the sugar. That right there is awesome. Multiple bone, multiple bone. But I'll tell you a little tip. When you get all that caramel stuck in your teeth, you have a hot coffee, like an espresso or a latte, and it just dissolves it. Oh boy, that's good. This goes really good with that too. Actually, it goes pretty good with everything, actually. <laughs> I'm thinking this should be another food group that we were talking about with the cookies last week. <laughs> As always, guys, thanks so much for joining me in the kitchen today. Now, remember, smash the like button, the notification. we got so much going on in the villa right now with renovations and upgrades. And it's a lot of fun to follow on YouTube and their progress on Facebook. And a big shout out to my subscribers. Greatly appreciate you guys. And for anybody new to our channel, consider smashing that subscribe button. I'll tell you, hey, make you part of the family. I greatly appreciate it. Now remember, if you haven't gotten our oil already, just click the link above or below or our web page or our Facebook page. Click buy it now, grab yourself a few bottles. We'll drop ship it right to your front doorstep. Again, a, a trip to Italy right in a bottle. And guys, my last and most important part of our videos is, you know, every week or a couple of times a month, you know, get around the table with your family, you know, and celebrate your heritage. And, and most important, most important, just like this recipe here, you know what? Set some traditions with you and your family. I'll tell you, they last you a lifetime. It brings you closer. I know they did for me. Hey guys, from my kitchen to yours, until next week, mwah, bon appetito.